We came to meet the radical Islamic preacher known as the Jamaican on his own turf. And up a winding road into the Jamaican hillside we climbed. So we think this is it. Where Sheikh Abdullah Al Faisal invited us. An interview, he said, to clear his name from an awful past. Hello? But we quickly learned Sheikh Al Faisal had told us a lot. Is the Sheikh in? No. Can you tell us where he is? He's not here. Not here yet? He's not back from Kingston? Faisal, it turned out, had lured CNN to his island as part of a shakedown. CNN does not pay for interviews. The Sheik was asking for $15,000 just to talk. Why are, you, why are you charging us so much money just to talk to you? More on that in a moment, but first, who is the Sheik? Why is he here in Jamaica? And why are counter-terrorism officials in the United States taking note? Is he still a concern now? Well, he is a major figure on the uh, uh, radical stage, so he remains someone that we are concerned about, yes. He has been called the hate cleric, urging young Muslim men that the way forward can never be the ballot. The way forward is the bullet. He was convicted and jailed for four years in Britain for inciting murder. Most recently arrested in Kenya, authorities say this 46-year-old Jamaican was encouraging young Muslims to fight in Somalia. His arrest sparked riots, leading to five dead. The Sheikh's followers have left a trail of death and terror, spanning two continents. Tapes of the Sheikh were found inside the apartment of this man, Jermaine Lindsay, who strapped on a backpack full of explosives on July 7, 2005, entering the London subway system and blowing himself up, killing dozens. Richard Reed listened to the Sheikh as he preached in London, then strapped explosives to his shoe and tried to blow up an airplane over the Atlantic. Accused bomber Umar Abdullah Motalib wrote about the Sheikh in his online blogging. He is the Nigerian student charged with reportedly placing explosives in his underwear, attempting to set himself and this airliner on fire last Christmas. Al Faisal tells young Muslim men it is their duty to terrorize and to kill Jews, Christians, Hindus, Americans. He's quoted as saying the best way to terrorize them is to exterminate them with jihad. The Quran says very clearly in the Arabic language, Torhibuna. This means terrorize them. It's a command from Allah. And America continues to spend billions of dollars in its war against Islam. When this New York based radical told us his command from Allah last year, he was actually quoting the teachings of Sheikh Abdullah al Faisal. So eager was Kenya to expel the Sheikh this year that authorities reportedly spent more than a half million dollars chartering a private jet to deport the sheik back to his homeland, Jamaica. Counter-terrorism officials believe parts of the Caribbean are at risk from radical Islam. The fear is that even isolated down that road in a home that this Islamic scholar, this preacher of radical Islam could have an effect on the population here, gather a following and perhaps influence others to follow the paths of the terrorists who have followed him. It's the reason we came to this island to interview Al Fazel, invited by the Sheikh himself who promised he would explain himself once we arrived. When we did arrive, his new agent explained to us there would be no interview unless we paid $15,000. CNN does not pay for any interviews, but during three telephone conversations and one face-to-face -face meeting, the Sheikh did try to explain how he was misinterpreted when he said Muslims should fight and kill Jews, Christians, Americans, and Hindus. That was the old Sheikh, he told me. I've reformed since then. I'm just asking you, do you feel any guilt at all that these men f listened to you and then went out and tried to kill people and some of them did kill people? They mis listened to many clerics? Do you feel any guilt that they listened to you? I'm asking you a question, so you, you will not answer that question right now. He just hung up. He says he won't do the interview. He won't do the interview unless he gets paid, period. And he won't answer that question. There may be good reason the Sheik needs to be paid. He's economically and even socially isolated here. Jamaica is 95% Christian. 
religion the Sheik calls paganism. Outside Sunday services in the community of Hopewell, where the Sheik has moved, we met village leader Cleveland Wright. I just want to make sure I understand what you're saying. Um, you're saying he's okay, he's, he's welcome to live here, yeah, he's welcome man, to live as a man, man, but not as a person we who would influence. No, no. The Sheik finds himself in a sort of exile in his own home country of Jamaica, unable to leave here because no airline will fly him. He's being watched by police and isn't even welcomed by Jamaica's Islamic community. The Islamic Council will not allow the Sheikh to preach in any of Jamaica's dozen or so mosques until he denounces his radical teachings. I have not spoken to him, not even for a minute, since his return to, to Jamaica. It is now day three of negotiating with the Sheikh, who appears to be shaking us down. We came down here, and then we get hit with expenses. I mean, On the phone with CNN producer Todd Schwarzschild, the Sheikh's agent tells us the price has just dropped. $5,000. Yeah, Sheikh, this is Drew Griffin again, just to close things out. Um, we're on with Abu now, and he still wants like $5,000. So our answer, of course, as you know, is, is no. There would be no interview, no promised apology for past offenses. But even isolated in his homeland, Abdullah Al-Faisal remains free to preach his militant brand of Islam over the Internet, and now just a short flight from his followers in the U.S.